COVID numbers, they're looking pretty good. We've seen numbers hang out in the lower tier for a while now. This map that you're looking at shows that Guilford County is in the green, but we've been other colors before and very recently we've been in the orange and the red. So cover numbers look pretty good now. People head inside for colder weather, then the numbers creep back up, which is why we have Dr. Cynthia Snyder from Cone Health here today. She's going to talk about how we can all keep ourselves healthy, make sure that those numbers stay low. So first and foremost, as we head indoors, right, because it's getting we've got those bursts of cold weather here and there. What should people do to keep the spread from going up? I think the lessons that we've learned is that masking does work. And so uh, we are heading into our uh, respiratory season where we anticipate probably another surge of COVID coming our way probably not as great as what we've had in the past. And that is largely due to people have either have immunity from having natural infection or um, more importantly, also getting vaccinated. And we also know flu, we know flu is gonna be around. We've already had some signals in our communities um, in neighboring states where they've had some flu outbreaks. And so we, we suspect it will be worse this year as more so than the past three years. Well, especially since most of us are not masking on a consistent basis, right? So Thanksgiving right. is next month. Maybe someone hasn't gotten their updated COVID booster yet. Should they do it now? Should they wait till they're, it's closer? You know, I think a perfect time to get it is now. Not only um, is there a choice, you know, some people can still stick with getting the mRNA vaccine, but there's also a new vaccine, uh, the Novavax vaccine, which is more similar to shingles or the Tdap vaccine. And that's also another option for getting a booster. And, um, and especially um, maybe some folks haven't had their primary series. So that's also another option to, to get that Novavax vaccine series. Well, and also um, definitely would still get the flu vaccine as well. Okay, well, let's talk about that, that new booster that is out. Let's review what people need to know about it. So, you know, I think a lot of folks initially have had some hesitation uh, of getting the mRNA vaccine because that technology is new. However, the technology that was used uh, for the Novavax has been around for very many, many decades. And um, it's approved for uh, those who are 18 years old and up. And the Oh, sorry, take that back. Twelve years and hold up, but if you um, for those, um, you can get a booster after you finish that primary series. And if you, for those who've had an mRNA series like Pfizer or Moderna, and they want to switch to the Novavax, you can be a candidate as long as you haven't had a previous booster for it. Okay. And, um, it, it is um, formulated, you know, before these new variants, like, you know, it has a high efficacy of 90%, but we still don't know what that number looks like um, in terms of, um, of, of Omicron variants. Okay, so what is the timeline for that shot? Like how long after your initial series do you need to wait for the Novavax? So those who, the Novavax is a two-dose series for the primary series and you can wait um, six months after that. But if you've had the other vaccine series, you can get, you could just wait two months. Okay, so if you had the Pfizer, the Moderna, or even the Johnson & Johnson. Correct, you can get another boost of the booster in two months. Okay, and so then how do we register to get that specific booster versus some of the other ones? You know, um, that you can go to any, of your some of your local pharmacies can can have um, the, the various boosters available but at conehealth.com I think backslash vaccine you can sign up and our pharmacies have access to all the boosters and you can just uh, choose the one you want choose the one you want we like to be able to do that all right let's talk flu shots because like you said flu that is already going around we're going to see it again as we uh, head into the fall can someone get the flu uh, shot at the same time as they get their booster Yes, it is very safe to get both of those uh, vaccines together. 
Okay, but if you do want them separate, let's say you're just like, I just, I don't want to fool with that. I want to make sure that I'm good both ways and you want to do them separate. Should you prioritize getting one versus the other first? Like, should you get the flu vaccine first or the COVID booster first or vice versa? I would probably get the, I don't think there is that much difference, but I think um, given that there's flu, they're starting to have flu cases in the community, it makes sense to get the flu vaccine. Okay, gotcha. All right. So back to the family gatherings, which we're all going to do in about a month's time. Should family and friends test for COVID before they see each other? Tanya, that, that, that is a great question. So the latest uh, CDC guidance uh, mentions people not to just test if you don't have any symptoms. However, that's different if you've had exposure. So if somebody's had exposure or close contact with somebody that's um, tested positive or has symptoms for COVID, it makes sense for you to consider getting tested in that, you know, day five window after the exposure. Um, I would recommend that if for family gatherings that, you know, try to be very con conscientious of everybody else and, and, you know, try to avoid other huge gatherings or wear a mask and then try to avoid any exposures to COVID before uh, getting together for uh, Thanksgiving. Yes, an early Christmas present of COVID is not fun, not what you want to spread around on Thanksgiving. Okay, um, if we do test before we go, are home tests still accurate with this new variant? Um, from what we know, um, we, we do feel that they're still very useful. Okay. So they continue to work. Okay, and what are some easy steps that everyone should take to avoid like co-infection from COVID and then flu? Yeah, I think the same principles that we've been using over the last couple of years includes hand hygiene, uh, you know, coughing etiquette, you know, not, try not to cough in your hand and then shake someone else's hand uh, and also, um, and, and masking, obviously. So I think all those are very useful tools to preventing um, the spread of respiratory viruses. And especially if you're traveling, I, I feel that also um, wearing a mask on the plane is very useful and protective of the patient, of the person. And also remembering that the, the best mask, the one that fits very well, that has a higher filtration. So if you can use a KN95 or a KF94, that those are very um, effective. Yeah, and nobody wants any of those for like the holidays. We don't want COVID, we don't want flu, we don't want norovirus, we don't want any of that stuff. All right, so you have your chance to ask your questions about this virus season. Um, and so what we wanna do is we wanna show you this number. The number is 336-379-5775. You can get your question answered in real time. You got a question for the doctor, this is when you text it in. We'll be back in just a minute.